Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm really excited to have you guys back. Uh, this podcast I'm doing just by myself. My wife is having uh, some coffee with a friend. And I wanted to record this podcast to talk about something that's been on my heart lately. And talk about um, just kind of reflecting on 2020. And then, you know, reflecting on 2021 this year that is... Uh, completely laid out before us and the perspective that I'm going to be having on 2021. Uh, looking back, obviously 2020 was a roller coaster for everybody. We all had ups and downs in ways that, you know, whether it was our health was literally affected by the pandemic or our finances were affected by the uh, shaky economy or, Even our relationships were affected by just, you know, simply social distancing or not being able to see family over the holidays or having to cancel certain events where usually you are able to connect with people. Um, And even also, not to mention, church uh, didn't get to attend church like most of us would have wanted to this year. A lot of us had to stay home and we had to resort to watching our sermons online and we actually were deprived of the physical community um, within our physical presence. And I can't imagine how that affected most people. Um, It was very much a downer for me. But in light of that, I think it's very important and it's very healthy to have an honest reflection of the year that just happened and then to try to gain an honest perspective of the year to come and what you want it to look like. Uh, What I want to invite you to do for 2020, if you've got time after you listen to this podcast, if you find this, uh, if you find this podcast to be useful, I would contact a couple of people, some people that you're really close with that you could probably have a long conversation with. And I would, I would ask to reflect on 2020, but I would be the one, like if I were you, I would call them and I would offer uh, a listening ear and I would say, Hey brother, Hey sister. Um, I want to know how your year was. And I want you to be open and I want you to be honest and I want you to have, I want you to have the opportunity to be vulnerable about how this year went for you. And I don't want you to hold back. I don't want you to be like, "Eh, you know, just, uh, it could have been better type deal. Like, give me your honest feedback. And what, if you had any regrets or if you had, um, If you had anything good happen to you, or if you really honestly were hurt by this year. And I want to invite you to reflect on 2020 in that way, by having an honest conversation with your neighbor, with your family. I think it'd be really healthy for you guys. I think it's going to be really healthy for me. I've had the opportunity to do that with my cousin already. Um, it's, It's important to look back at your losses more than your victories and to understand and identify what went wrong or how that went bad or how it could be better. Um, Going into 2021, though, there are a couple perspectives that I want to try to have for this year that I think a lot of other people would benefit in trying to adopt into their own perspective. Um, one thing that I thought about the other week, um, because me and my wife starting off in marriage, we're getting our battle routine down. As my grandfather would say, we're basically figuring out our finances. We're figuring out our schedule. We're figuring out our one year goal, our five year goal, our 10 year goal. We're also figuring out what food we want to buy on a weekly basis or when we want to work out together or, you know, when is, when can I have my free time? When can she have her free time? What can she spend money on? What can I spend money on? And, you know, even are we doing devotional this morning? Are we doing it later today? 
are we going to church together or is somebody sleeping in? It's just all these different questions to ask. But one thing, one perspective that popped up in my mind uh, this last week that I've had the opportunity to ask other people before is, am I live? Am I living my life on a basis of what I can give or am I living my life on a basis of what I can take? That to me is probably one of the most important questions that you should be honest about with yourself because I definitely believe that if you're able to honestly answer that question, it is a very direct variable into your daily happiness. So what I mean by that is if you are constantly having the perspective of, you know, what can I get? What can I buy? What can I take? What am I owed? What do I need? What do I want? so forth and so forth, where you are living life on a consumer level. I believe that if you are living life on a basis of taking instead of giving, I think we can all unanimously agree that happiness or contentment or joy or peace is a fleeting thing. So what I mean is if you're living to take, then it's automatically harder to achieve because you're chasing that thing. You're chasing more money. You're chasing more food. You're chasing more possessions. Maybe you're chasing a better body. Maybe you're chasing better clothes. You're wanting to take, take, take. You're wanting to consume consume, consume, and it doesn't, it, it's not living on a basis of there's an end goal. It's just, what is the next thing? I think this is a very, very important thing to start learning and understanding because it's a direct reflection on your happiness. And if we're going to have a better year than 2020, going into 2021, We should be able to answer this question. Are we living on a taking basis or a giving basis? So if you do answer it with, yes, I'm living on a taking basis, maybe your New Year's resolution for 2021 is having an honest conversation with yourself or with your family, or with your spouse, or with your friends. Do whatever you have to do. But go have an honest conversation with your family on what it would look like to essentially start living life on a giving basis. What would it look like to live life where the goal was not what you can take, but what you can give? Think about that in your line of work. Think about that in how much you volunteer at church. Think about that with your family. Think about that with your friends. Think about that with every aspect of your life. Take your finances. Take your relationships. Take your mentality, your your emotional uh, EQ, your intelligence. Uh, Literally, look at every aspect of your life and ask yourself, Is this area of my life living on a giving basis or a taking basis? And then start to have conversations on what it would look like to live life on a giving basis in this area. A giving basis with my finances. Living life on a giving basis with my wife. Um, How can I give more to her than I try to take? If you're able to answer that honestly and get a game plan for 
what it would look like to live life on a giving basis. I think that would be a tremendous goal to have for 2021. Uh, I think happiness and joy and peace and all of the other fulfilling uh, aspects of your spiritual life will probably find you a lot quicker. So don't look at the things that you don't have, but look at the things that you have and be faithful with what has been given to you so that by chance in the future, you can be faithful with more. That's my perspective for 2021. Me and my wife are going to do a New Year's resolutions podcast and we're going to kind of, uh, you know, reflect on 2020 and we're going to give some other New Year's resolutions. But for myself personally, I wanted to put out there that I think this perspective on life would be very, very valuable to have with all things considered in 2020 and have this perspective for 2021 Not so that worldly circumstances might go well, but that the circumstances in your own spiritual life, the circumstances in your own heart would be in your favor. So with that being said, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope that uh, that brought some value or perspective or maybe even caused you to ask yourself some questions. But with that being said, thank you so much for listening, and I hope that that tidbit was refreshing and life-giving, because that's always what I want this to be. I want all of the things that you hear from myself or my wife or anybody else that comes on the podcast to be something that truly just is a life-giving conversation. So thank you once again for listening. Excuse me. And I will see you next time. Be safe.